Greetings and welcome back. We're thinking about population genetics at the moment and on this particular vignette I'm going to try to do a combination of using um, my keynote presentation which you see now and then also going over to my iPad and doing some calculations. So remember last time we talked about the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and the idea there was in an infinitely large population if I have a certain fraction of alleles which are big A, that fraction will be unchanged over time as long as there are no interventions such as selection, which might favor the big A, big A genotype, or mutation, which might tend to cause big A to become little a more frequently than little a becomes big A, or, or you know, whatever, um, or finite size effects, which is the thing we're going to think about now. So the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium was presumed on the basis of drawing our alleles out of an infinite bag so that, you know, or another way of saying it is that we, we were thinking about a huge population. And the reason that the hugeness matters is that the larger the, the population, the smaller the fluctuations will be. And so what we want to do now is we want to think about fluctuations in small populations, which it turns out is an evolutionary force. So I already showed you this earlier, but now we're going to talk about it in, in actual mathematical detail. So just as a reminder, there was an experiment by Peter Burry done in the 1950s. The idea was that he started a population with a bunch of orange-eyed heterozygotes. And the concept was that he had eight males and eight females, as you see on the very left here, of, uh, of, of um, this phenotype, meaning orange-eyed. And now what he did is he allowed them to mate, and then he collected eggs, and in the end, created a new vial in the next generation, which was selected randomly, eight males and eight females again. But as you can see, on the right-hand side over here, the number of oranges has gone down and the number of whites and reds has gone up. Initially, there were no reds and no whites, and as time goes on, we get more and red and uh, white-eyed flies. And the reason for this is that the mating is probabilistic. The male and the female get together, and they, in the initial population, each harbored one red and one white allele, and that, mean that, there was a, that means that there was a one-quarter chance that their offspring would be white-white, there was a one-quarter chance that their offspring would be red-red, and then there was a one-half chance that their offspring would be red-white, right? So that's the, that's the idea. And so the nature of the experiment is to just carry, you know, just with quotes, and I apologize, that's really demeaning for the hard work that was done by Burry, but he collects uh, generation after generation, 107 different vials, and each generation keeps track of the number of, of red and white alleles. Remember last time we showed how to calculate P, little p, which is the probability of a big A or the probability of a red. What is that? It's two, so, so what do I do? I take, I count the number of, uh, of red-eyed flies and, and then I divide by um, two times the number, how do I want to say this? I, I multiply two times the number of red-eyed flies plus one times the number of orange-eyed flies and I divide by two times the total number of flies. And that gives me little p and little p is so little p of red or whatever you want to call it and i can plot that over time or i should say Burry did so that's what's plotted on the the x-axis here so the x-axis uh meaning the thing at the bottom that says frequency of bw75 alleles is the fraction of the alleles that are red so when it's one that means every single fly is red and when it's zero, it means every single fly is white. And when it's somewhere in between, that means we have a, a, a population which is heterogeneous. And the way we reckon little p, the frequency of BW75 alleles, is that we, we look at the number of reds and the number of oranges, and we use the rule I just set. So just again, uh, and maybe this is a good moment for me to try to shift over to my iPad, so let's see if this works. Bear with me for a second. This is 
just a little bit of a, a ballet for me to go through. So it should allow me to share my screen in a moment. Here we go. Great. So what am I what what am I mumbling about here? I'm saying that if I want to find P and the way I do it is by looking at flies, then what I do is I say two times the number of red red flies plus one times the number of orange flies. Ah, sorry, I, let, let me just call this red. I apologize, I'm just doing this on the fly and being sloppy. And then divide by two times the total number of flies. So that's P. So, uh, you know, and, and that ends up being, well, okay, no, uh, that, that's, that's all Burry needed to do. He needs to count how many red flies are there. That's this quantity. Uh, that's, then he number, counts the number of orange flies and then divides by two times the number of flies, which is 16. And that gives, that gives the quantity P. So what we want to do, so, so I'm going to claim, and you're going to see in, in class and then in the homework, I'm going to claim that there are several ways for us to go after this. So the f approach number one is to do a stochastic simulation. And what do I mean by that? I mean that what we will do is we will start in generation one with uh, 16 flies. Eight, and we're not going to really worry at this point about males and females because the way we're going to do this is we're going to start out with a bag of 32 alleles. And the bag will be uh, 16 reds and 16 whites. And then what, the way we'll write the stochastic code is we will reach into the bag in groups of two and we will look at, you know, do we get two reds or do we get two whites or do we get a, a red and a white? And then we'll, in the new generation, we'll start creating the, the, the generation one flies. So the first one was, let's say I got a red and a white, so the first one's still an orange. Then I got a red, red. And so in the, in the generation two, two pile, I'm going to say, oh, I've got a red fly now. And then I do it again, I get another orange. And, you know, maybe when I'm done, I'll have, uh, let's say that I'll have uh, 14 oranges. You know, I don't, let's just make something up. Uh, 10 oranges, four reds, and two whites. So that's still a total of 16 flies. But now we, we're starting to, there's a bias towards red alleles in the population. And so what we will do is we will, and we'll do this on the computer, we'll take 107 different vials. You know, all these are, are basically for loops. So, you know, the number of flies, we, we sum over that in a for loop form, and the number of vials, we sum over that in for loop form, and, and we'll keep track. We'll basically just keep track. So that's one of the ways we'll go after this. The second way we will approach it is using what I'm going to refer to as the right fisher model, and this also you will work out on the computer, this is really a cool model that invokes what we've learned about coin flipping over the course of our mathematical lives. So the right fisher model, what is the idea here? So uh, we're going to define a vector x uh, in generation n plus 1, and this vector is Uh, it's a vector that gives me the probabilities of P of zero alleles, P, red alleles, P of one, P of two, blah, 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 all the way down to P32. So what, what am I saying here? So this P0 is the probability of zero red alleles in the population. This one is the probability of one red allele 
and I do this all the way down to here, which is the probability of 32 red alleles. Do you see that there, when I, when I look in the population, there can be anything from zero red alleles, which means every fly is white, all the way to 32 red alleles, which means every fly is red. I can have every integer between zero and 32. So there's 33 possible states, if you like. And what I wanna do is I want to understand how the probability changes from one generation to the next. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to imagine that the population varies um, by a, a dynamical rule, which is based on the, the binomial distribution. So let, let me try to explain what I mean by that. So I wanna know the, the transition probability to go from currently having I red alleles in generation N to J red alleles in generation N plus one. You see the idea? So I currently have I of them. And the way the, the rule is, as I said before, the rule is we're going to now try to, we're going to try to flip, basically flip coins, but it's a dishonest coin. So let me, let me see uh, the probability of a red is gonna be given by uh, I divided by two N two. This is the probability that when I reach into the bag, that I will grab a red. Why? Because there's currently red, uh, I red alleles, and the total number of alleles is two times n tote. So the fraction of the tiles, I have two kinds of tiles, white and red. The fraction of the tiles that are red is I over, or over two n tote. And that means that, you know, that I'm, I'm flipping a coin or I'm reaching into a bag and the probability of pulling out a, a red is, is given by I over 2 and 2. So then that, that tells me that this transition probability of going from I to J, what's that going to be equal to? Well, I know over here that it's I over 2 and tote to the J power and then times one minus I over two N tote to the two N tote minus J. So this bit right here is the probability of J uh, red tiles drawn in two n tote trials. And this bit is the probability of uh, two n tote minus j red tiles drawn in two n tote trials. But we're missing something. And that is the, th this is for a particular realization. So if you like the thing that I've got over here, you can think of this as the probability that I do J straight reds. And, uh, oh man, I made a little mistake when I wrote this down. This is white tiles. N tote minus J white. So, uh, so what I'm saying is that here I drew 
uh, a J straight reds, and here I drew two N tote minus J straight whites. But I didn't have to get them in that sequence. I could have gotten them in a completely different sequence, and that different sequence would have could have happened in this many ways. So let's just stare at that. What what have I done? I've I've written down basically the binomial distribution. So I'm what I'm claiming is that the um, is that on a given iteration, in going from generation n to generation n plus one, in generation n I had i red alleles. Now I'm going to go to the next generation. I want to find out what's the probability after this process that I will have j red alleles. Well, the answer is the probability of flipping j uh, heads or getting pulling j reds out of my little bag, given that the probability of a red is i over 2, 2 n tote. And then this prefactor, this business, is noticing that there's many different ways of doing j reds and 2 n tote minus j whites. You know, I gave you one of them, which is first I do j reds and then 2 n tote minus j whites. But I could have first done 2 n tote minus j whites and then j reds and all the other weird ways that I can mix up the, the process. Now here's the, here's the cool mathematics, or I should say the, the outcome. The outcome is that x, this vector at the n plus 1 generation, is given by this matrix that we just calculated acting on the, the a vector at the nth generation, which tells me that if I'm if I want to figure out uh, what's going on based on the initial distribution so so what I'm saying here is that this line was saying in the if I know the frequencies in the nth generation I want to find out what's going on in the n plus one generation then I apply this transition matrix P onto that giant vector. But I can now, by iteration, see that given an initial condition, I start with this uh, x1 vector, and then I propagate forward. Let me show you. I think I actually worked this out for a specific case. Yeah, so let's, let's take a look right here. So, um, so let's consider the case where I only have uh, two total alleles. So this is kind of very weird artificial example where, you know, I start out with uh, with two tiles, and I initially I start out with one red and one white. So I've got one heterozygous fly, and now what I'm interested in is one generation down. Uh, so, so at that at that point, the the initial condition. So x one for my case is going to be zero one zero. What I mean by that is the probability of having zero red alleles is zero. The probability of having here uh, two red. That's zero. This is the probability of having zero red. And the probability of having one red. It's equal to 1, because my initial condition is that I know I started out with one orange fly. Now, this matrix, what we're going to do is we're going to apply it once to this vector. So first I have to work out what the matrix is. So that's what's shown here. And, you know, here, here I, I calculate for you the probability that if I currently have 1 and I go to 0, what's the probability of that? Well, the total number of alleles is two, so that's my n. That's two factorial, uh, and the probability of pulling a red is uh, one half. The probability of pulling a white is one half, and I'm asking for doing white twice. Right? I want to have zero red alleles at the end of this first generation. The probability of that is a quarter, because this is basically 
the matrix is representing the Punnett square. So, uh, let's see. Right, so uh, here's the matrix that I got for this, this little test. And here I apply it to two different initial conditions. So the first initial condition, this one, is the vector is one, zero, zero. What does that mean? It means the probability of having, this is, this is P0, P1, P2. So the probability of having one, sorry, zero red alleles is one. I start out with no red alleles. So the probability is one. Then I apply this matrix P onto that vector and I get the same vector back again. That's good. I start out with zero red alleles. I can't get any. So I don't have any when I finish. Here, this is the case that I just mentioned, which is that I start out with one red allele. That's the orange eyed fly. And one generation later, I have a one quarter chance of having a white fly, a one half chance of having an orange fly, and a one quarter chance of having a red fly. And I can keep going. I can keep applying this operator P this matrix P, I can keep operating again and again and again, and what will come up, come out of that, um, let's see, I'm not sure where I put it, but yeah, here. What will come out of it is a very beautiful continuous version of this thing. In other words, the one I'm showing you here is the result of a stochastic simulation, but as you're gonna see uh, with, with Rachel and in the homework, there will be a, a nice continuous output of this, which comes basically from the the physics of and mathematics of the binomial distribution. So this is my little introduction to genetic drift. So let me just summarize what I think I've tried to sh show you or tell you. The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is broken in a finite population. How badly it's broken is dependent upon the size of the population. The smaller the population, the quicker it will deviate from that Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So that's the first comment that I have. We can mathematicize that. Oh, there was, and, and, and note there was this beautiful experiment, which I've already introduced to you several times. But we can mathematicize this idea either by doing stochastic simulation or by this Wright Fisher model, where the Wright Fisher model basically intellectualizes it's, it pictures the breeding as uh, an urn with a bunch of red and white alleles. And because the population size is sufficiently small, we're used to the idea. If I take 10 people in a room and I ask them, are you born on an even day? You know, in general, the average will be five, five out of 10 people will say yes, but I've done it lots of times. You know, sometimes it'll be six, sometimes it'll be seven. There could even be the crazy case of t all 10 people being born on an even day. So that's fine. Um, what we've done is we've written down the mathematics of that in this very beautiful language of vectors, the vector X, which tells me the probability of having anywhere between zero and two n tote uh, red alleles. And it'll, it shows us how to go from some initial condition to n generations in. So that's, that's what I hope that I've accomplished in this dis discussion.